This is an extraordinary area. This bit of southeast Transylvania is the largest single, well-preserved, high biodiversity farm landscape, and it's the most threatened kind of landscape in Europe. I like to call it the equivalent of the, the rainforests of Europe. 98% have been lost through intensification. Literally, miles and miles of grassland, so full of flowers it looks as if they've been planted here by some crazy gardener. It's kind of like England as you imagined it centuries ago. Um, I've really loved that. That's just beautiful. It's, it's uh, like this morning with the cows and um, seeing them you know, go out to the pasture. And it, yeah, it, it is almost like going back in time. range of surveys that we're carrying out gives us a snapshot of how this landscape is being managed in terms of the farming activities that are going on and also a snapshot in terms of the biodiversity of the landscape covering a whole range of different uh, species groups um, and then if we come back in future years and redo those surveys we'll be able to assess how the farming practices are changing and what effect they're having on the biodiversity uh, and the landscape as a whole. We were hoping to catch um, at least some small mammals this morning, but we've had a really good haul, much more than I'd expect, which is very exciting for a mammal ecologist to come out here and see these things. So hopefully also the research can show us really the differences between some of the farming practices that go on here. But these guys have just found this, um, this lovely grass snake and you can tell it's a grass snake because of the yellow collar around its neck. Well we've seen some pretty cool lizards but I'd say I've really enjoyed the butterfly catching. Especially now I keep on pointing out all the different butterflies when we go on walks. So far we've got 58 different species on our species list for butterflies. Uh, it's probably more than you would see in your whole lifetime in the UK. This is a juvenile redback shrike. Um, these guys are a great indicator of what sort of habitat and wildlife is around here. Although we've never had loads of these in the UK like they have here, we used to have a a fairly sort of regular breeding population and now we're down to just one or two pairs so that's why it's so important to keep this habitat how it is otherwise we're going to lose creatures such as this and other birds it's it is very important The churches make fantastic habitats for bats. They provide lots of roost features. There's a greater mouse seed sat in there. So mist netting is a really great opportunity to get the students involved. Um, they can actually see a bat in the hand, which not many people do. Um, last night, it was great. We had six different species, um, seven bats in total. It was pretty brilliant. We're also setting up camera traps at uh, various woodland locations to be able to try and get an assessment of the bear and wolf population. And I was out with the large mammal team two nights ago and we'd only been sat there for maybe two minutes before we saw our first bear. Then not long afterwards we saw uh, a mother bear and her cub. And it was an amazing experience to see bears in Europe. It's just. Uh, yeah, uh, something that I'll remember for the whole, all of my life. You can't preserve this landscape by slapping on protection orders. You can only preserve it by maintaining traditional farm management. That's the only way of preserving it. And that's why Wallacea is important, because through Wallacea we can get years 
of, of repeated monitoring of sites so that we can see the changes in this landscape. Because if this landscape disappears, it'll be a unique part of Europe that is gone. We want to help save it. And to help save it, we need to monitor the changes and measure the changes that are going on.